If you have a car that's making an undesired noise, you probably don't have the time and or money to just throw a whole bunch of parts at it and hope that one of them is the problem and you fixed it. In this video, I'm going to diagnose my own 2005 Pontiac GTO, and I'm going to show you my diagnostic process so you can apply this process to your car, figure out what's wrong, and just replace the part that needs replacing. So first, let's listen to this noise that we're working with. When I first heard this noise, it was after the car had been sitting for a long time. I was worried that oil didn't get to the rod bearings or main bearings in time and I spun a bearing or something. That would have been a very involved and expensive repair. I also thought maybe it's a lifter noise. Still not great, but it's a little easier to get to. Now one thing that you can generally assume with these repetitive noises is if it only happens when the car is running, then it has something to do with a currently active moving part. Notice that my car doesn't have to be moving anywhere for this noise to happen. Most of that is going to be in the engine area. Now imagine you only heard a sound when the car is moving and it doesn't make any sound at all when it stopped. That could be something like a wheel bearing or an axle. You have to think what moves like this when I'm hearing the sound. So far in this example, we've pretty much eliminated the drivetrain. I could use the throttle pedal to give it a little more RPM and I can hear that the rate of the sound increases. The next thing that I did was that I pressed the AC button to activate the AC compressor. This puts more load on the engine. The engine has to do more work to keep it spinning. Although this didn't get picked up on camera, I noticed it got a lot louder when I did that. Now we found something that can change the sound, which means we're getting closer to the actual problem. One of the convenient things about this particular engine is that the belt that drives the AC compressor is basically by itself. There's the crankshaft pulley, the AC compressor pulley, and then an idler and tensioner pulley to keep the belt tight. Important to note here is that the belt does still spin even though the AC compressor is off. The AC compressor itself gets turned on and off by a magnetic clutch. So my next step was to remove that belt. All I had to do is take off the main belt that drives everything else, get to the AC belt, take that off, and then put back the regular belt that drives the alternator, power steering, everything else. There are a decent amount of cars out there that have dual belt systems. Some of them even have three belt systems. You can use this technique on other engines as well, but just be aware there are a lot of things you can deactivate that can ruin your engine or your driving experience. If the water pump's not spinning, you can overheat quite quickly. If your power steering pump's not going, it's gonna be real hard to steer. If your alternator's not spinning, then you're relying on battery reserve power for everything in the car. Just make sure you take precautions based on what you're deactivating when you take a belt off. So my main belt is back on. Let's fire up this engine and see what happens. Awesome, that completely eliminated the sound. So with the engine off, I reached in and checked the pulleys that were involved in the AC belt routing. When rotating the idler and tensioner pulleys, I felt that it wasn't smooth, it was kind of gritty feeling. And when I gave them a spin by hand, they actually made some noise. So because I found a way to eliminate the noise completely and I found the source of the noise, I know exactly what I need to replace. Not all sounds are going to be this easy to find and not all of them can be eliminated by taking a belt off. If the sound is internal to the engine, you can use tools like a mechanic stethoscope or the old school screwdriver handle to your ear trick. You can use that technique to find where the sound is the loudest and sometimes you can identify the sound. If you have no idea what you're dealing with to begin with, there are some engine sounds that just by doing this test or even trying to drive it to the mechanic can cause more damage to your engine. So performing these tests at your own risk. Hopefully this made working on your car just a little bit easier. I'll see you in the next Car Simplified video. Thanks for watching.